Communication is a tool all individuals use to express their wants, needs, and opinions. When an individual is not able to communicate, it makes for a very frustrating life. There are many types of communication disorders that affect all age groups, but for this assignment, I chose to focus on articulation and resonance disorders for ch of children. An articulation disorder is when there are errors in the production of individual speech sounds, and a resonance disorder is when there is too much or too little nasal or oral sound energy being produced during speech sounds. An evaluation for these disorders can be done by a speech language pathologist or SLP or a doctor. If a speech language pathologist has done the evaluation and does notice um, structural malformations or functional insufficiencies, they will be the client will be referred to a doctor for further evaluation. Leading me into treatment. So popular treatment for these disorders um, is either surgery or surgical intervention or speech therapy. For clients who have a cleft palate or velopharyngeal insufficiency, surgery will be the best option to increase the closure between the oral and nasal cavity to decrease the hypernasality and resonance and also try to increase the articulation of speech sounds. If surgery is not needed, the client should continue speech therapy to learn exercises and different ways to uh, produce correct articulation. For the case study, I chose to focus on Camden, a six-year-old boy who does speech therapy with, the, with Joan Yu Long. He started his first session on the platform when he was in kindergarten, and then the second session on the platform was when he was in first grade. Joni explained a little bit of Camden's background, including that he has velopharyngeal insufficiency surgery in summer of 2015, having a posterior pharyngeal flap surgery to close off the velopharyngeal port. And he also has had heart surgery in December of 2015. So there are additional health considerations um, going on with Camden in addition to the articulation and resonance disorders. Throughout the session, Joni focused first on plosives, so creating enough um, air and pressure in the oral cavity in order to produce those plosive sounds and decreasing that res the resonance along the way. Once plosives were worked on for a bit, she then moved to affricates and fricatives. To help Camden hear his errors, she used many auditory feedback tools in the first session, including an auditory feedback mic, where Camden put headphones on and spoke into a microphone in order to hear the errors and hopefully lead to self-correction. If self-correction did not occur, Joni used many cues and tools, um, such as pointing to the mouth, standing nice and close to him so he can see how she is producing those sounds. In addition to auditory feedback tools, she used some tactile cues as well, including a throat scope and a lollipop. She used the lollipop to help bring awareness to the placement of articulators, such as for the g sound, putting it on the back of his tongue and the back of his palate so he's able to feel and taste when his tongue hits the back. She also used a throat scope to allow him to see inside of his mouth and view his articulators. Um, Camden came in with unintelligible speech and has shown so much improvement um, stated by Joni Long. Camden is a great example of a child who got the proper treatment and is continuing to get the proper treatment for the articulation and resonance disorders. Thank you.